All right. I'm going to share on the Word of God today, as I always try to do. Uh, this happened to be a rather complicated gospel uh, for this celebration. It's a very complicated gospel. And um, when I started preparing this uh, over a week ago, I was saying, oh my God. This is so complicated. So I, I have to share some of it with you and then we draw some other conclusions. It's the story of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. Now, this is the Gospel of St. John. Bing! That tells you all sorts of things. We'll come back to that. The multiplication of the loaves and fishes says something happened. And the temptation always, especially for the scholars, and even for those who are trying to deny their faith, well, how did that happen? It sounds like there was a miraculous, molecular event where this little pile of loaves and fishes became a whole bunch of loaves and fishes. We don't know that that's what happened. Something happened. That's the key. Something happened. And scholars have said, well, maybe people were fasting because it was near Passover. And so they didn't eat. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe they were uh, all gluten-free, and they decided that they weren't going to have any gluten, even if Jesus was passing it out free. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, Rudolf Bultmann, of all people, the great German scripture scholar, who changed the way we look at the Bible all over the world. I mean, this is a, a voice of authority. What did he say? He said, I know how it happened. They saw the kids sharing his lunch, and everybody decided they would share theirs. And so it was a big potluck supper. Everybody brought their own, and it was the first Christian potluck supper that um, ever was organized. Because people want to say, how it happened? The key is something happened. Now, we also find creeping through the storm. And if you are a Bible scholar, you say, oh, I know exactly what that means. 5,000 men. There's not a place in Galilee where 5,000 people can gather for God's sake. You know? But 5,000 men, that's a clue. A number beyond imagining. And there were leftovers. Oh! This is one of those prophet stories. All through the Old Testament, there's this promise that when the reign of God comes, when Jesus comes, when the power comes, thousands of people will be fed and there'll be lots of leftovers. So what do the people at the end of the gospel say? He must be the prophet. And that's the prophet promised by Moses. Moses said before the Messiah comes, there will be a prophet who will come. So, the people that are telling the story are even reading into it. But what's the point? Something happened. Then the third thing, of course, is this story was written and presented to the Christian community probably a hundred years after it happened. Oh, how can that be? The Gospel of St. John, written so late, and where was it shared? It was shared at Mass. A hundred years after the event, the people are told, like all of you coming today, something happened with the loaves and the fishes. Something happened, like with the prophets of old. Something happened when you raise your eyes and you give thanks to God. In other words, they heard this at Mass just like you are. And what did they walk away? They said, something happened then. And what's the point? Something is happening now. Something is happening today. Now, what is one of the keys about what is happening? Well, the key, of course, goes back to that little boy. Little boy who had a hefty lunch. Five barley loaves and two fish for a little kid. That's he planned on staying up a long time. His mama took good care of him when she packed his lunch. He was going to have enough for a few days if he got lost and didn't want to come home. But what does he do? The little boy takes a risk and gives it up. And 
and something will happen. You see, that's the critical gesture. That's the important thing. The little boy took a risk, moved into an arena of Jesus, and when you move into the Jesus arena, something happens. And very often, it's little kids who do it. I remember my first homily here. It was the Feast of the Epiphany. 22 years ago. And I told you a simple little story about a little girl. She was in my sixth grade class. I was a new teacher. I was really wet behind the ears. I told you these stories. I was a little over the top as a teacher. And um, even for an 11 year old, I was out there, okay? So this little girl comes into my, fifth, my sixth grade class, and every time she comes into my class, she emotionally shuts down. Now that was pretty scary at first. I thought she was afraid of me. What did I do? What, what am I doing wrong? Uh, what am I missing here? And, and finally, her mother came and said, Mr. Dobson, can we talk? And she told me the little girl's story. And we worked on a plan. This little girl, by the time she was 11 years old, had been traumatized. Not by me, but by someone else. And we were willing to take a risk. She and I, we talked about this. She was willing to take a risk with me. And I was willing to take a risk with her. And something happened. This brave little girl, 11 years old, terrified beyond imagining, began to work with me. She would tremble. She was so afraid of what might happen. But when you take that risk, and you're willing to move into a Jesus arena and say, Jesus, show me what to do, give me the strength, something happens, right? Something happens. And so it did. At Christmas time, she gave me a gift. Two gifts, as a matter of fact. One was um, a handmade candle that I wouldn't dare light or I'd burn down my apartment. I was afraid because it was, it was obviously the work of an 11 year old. But it was a candle. And then she gave me a burlap banner with felt letters on it cut out as an 11-year-old would. It was homely in the classical sense of the word. It was done at home. It was not done professionally. Her mother didn't do it for her. The, the letters weren't perfect. Everything wasn't space right. But she gave me a burlap banner, and the message was, Merry Christmas, Mr. Dobson. Something happened. That's what the, the gospel is about. Something happening then and something happening now. And we come as people are confident that something will happen tomorrow. 22 years ago, I came here. I came without an agenda of my own. The only agenda I had was from Bishop Mansell. And it included staffing, funding, programming, and Catholic schools. That was the agenda I came with and said, oh well, we'll see what happens. And then of course, the most miraculous thing, Jesus pushed, pushed me down the stairs to the rectory and broke my back and then the right things happened. And you know what happened. I fell in love with this town, first of all. Your town is lovable. And then I eventually fell in love with this church, and then finally I fell in love with you. Something happened. And, and then I said, well, something happened with you. Some of you got up and left because I was over the top. And some of you tolerated me. Some of you were amused by me and said, he can't go on like this. This has got to be a show. He can't be really like this. And then some of you actually think came to like me. And, and, and something happened, you see? Something happened. 
And that's what it all is about. When we are people of faith, we are confident that something is going to be happening. And so here we are at Mass, we hear this gospel, and I can assure you something is going to happen. We're going to gather at this table, we're going to share the body of Christ. And you know what? It's going to be small, and there's going to be leftovers. And there's going to be plenty for all of you. Because that's the way Jesus works. Something is happening. And then I would encourage you, you know, there'll be a new way of being a parish here. There'll be new priests, and there'll be new rules, and there'll be new things. But remember, the priest doesn't make, make it happen. Jesus does. And so I encourage you to continue to allow it to happen by being open and gracious. And that means that you have to be like the little boy in the gospel willing to take a risk. You have to be like that little girl in my sixth grade class. You need to be willing to overlook some things and you need to be able to surrender to a plan that is not the one that you think is the right one. But you're going to do it anyway and through it all something happens. And when you do it in a godly way Jesus promises that something happens and you are never the same. I suspect that little boy in the gospel was never the same. I suspect that the, the apostles had a lot more things to get under their belt before they were transformed by that little boy I think you. And that little girl in my 11th grade class she has to be in my seventh grade homeroom. And I said to her, I'd love to have you. Because I moved from sixth grade to seventh grade. I, I was promoted like all the kids were. I moved to seventh grade and she said, can I be in your seventh grade homeroom? You sure can. Because something has happened and something will continue. So there is a song that is a transition song for me. It's by hand. How about a little louder? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Even louder. I got to be moved by it. I got to be brought to tears by it.
my funeral. This will be the closing song. I've already made arrangements with the organs to be present. It's in the will in the money. I want this church to be sound with this sound. My body is carried out, and I move into heaven. No hallelujah chorus. I want handle to dance the music that speaks to my heart, and I hope it speaks to yours.